You know, I feel like I'm the same every Friday where I just want to sing Rebecca Black song, so I'm not going to do that today. Instead, I'm going to welcome you to Hot News and say, I hope you have a merry weekend. That's what I'm asking today. It's Friday, Friday. Reese doesn't let it escape. Let's jump on into the existential question of the day, which is, if you punch yourself and it hurts, are you too strong or are you too weak? Ow. I gotta know, because one would argue that the ability to feel pain doesn't make one weak, but the other side would argue that if you were able to take punches better, you wouldn't hurt so much, you weakling. Which one? Too strong, too weak? Answer down below in the comments. Which one are you? Let's find out. And let's also find out some uh, potentially devastating information regarding the PlayStation 5. There's actually a bit of news that came out yesterday circulating around Sony's brand new console that we're expecting towards the end of next year. Or are we? Yes, because the executive editor over at Windows Central got some information with regards to the PlayStation 5 and the fact that one, the reason we haven't seen Sony show it off is because they actually don't have a design that can keep it properly cooled. And two, the reason we haven't seen any PS5 exclusive gameplay is because game developers haven't been able to figure out how to optimize their games for the console because the thing overheats. The message that was posted says, I also know people developing directly for Sony. I work in the business in another sector. The collective feeling is Sony screwed up this gen. They underestimated Microsoft and were overconfident. Again, expect delays to the PS5 and heating problems to rival the Xbox 360. Sony is really concerned right now. Don't you find it odd that they have yet to really show the hardware despite pressure to do so from Microsoft? Because the hardware fails at an alarming rate. The system cannot maintain its clocks. Its insane PCI Express SSD gets too hot, but they're also saying that if it wasn't a PCI Express 4.0 and it was just a 3.0, it's also overheating in this setup. The underlying issue is Sony did not realize the form factor needed to be changed and now they are concerned about having to completely redesign it and have it look more like the Xbox Series X tower because it will look like they just copied Microsoft. And then it continues again, do you also not think it odd that they have not shown off some launch titles? Reason, the devs have no idea what to optimize for because Sony has no idea what the PS5 will deliver in consistent performance yet, and they do not want to show off captures from dev systems that do not match what a production console would produce. So towards the end of the message saying, the debate right now is do they delay by six to 12 months to get it right, or do they force it out to keep pace with Microsoft and deal with a high fail rate and performance issues? So that is a message that was sent to, again, the executive editor at Windows Central. Got a lot of stuff going there. It's obviously complete speculation at this point, not from somebody that can be necessarily held to task with whether or not this is a legitimate rumor, but it does seem like that is coming out. There's information being posted out there that Sony is just not able to keep the thermals under check, which kind of makes sense to me on one level because a 2.23 gigahertz clock on a GPU to get your highest performance that you're trying to show off would be a lot. NVMe SSDs put off a lot of heat. Running your CPU at a high rate will also put off a lot of heat. So there's a lot of factors that could reasonably explain the fact that yes, we haven't seen anything because Sony isn't ready to show it off. So that's my concern side. My other side, my more like hopeful side says they haven't shown it off because they're just doing proper marketing. They're getting people to want to see it so much that when they finally release it, everybody will be like, oh, we're only gonna talk about Sony now because we had to wait so long for it. Could be that, who knows? We'll find out. That's one side of the conversation with PlayStation 5 overheating, but then there's the other side of the conversation where Digital Foundry got exclusive interview with Mark Cerny and discussed some of the topics with regards to the PlayStation 5 ability to stay at its boost clock. And Mark Cerny seemed like he was confident that the GPU and CPU could run at their boost clocks pretty much all of the time in most games. So you have the Sony engineer saying everything's totally fine, but then you have Sony actually not showing us everything's fine. They just have Mark Cerny talking fun of a freight crowd and say everything's going to be okay. But then there's plenty of other indications that make it seem like you're not showing us anything because everything's bad. And this is maybe the conspiratorial minded amongst us might be feeling that way. It's really difficult to know where we stand right now. Obviously, Sony has kept tight lip on a whole lot of stuff that Microsoft has just been exclusively blatant about. Showing off the product image of the console before they actually gave us specific details. Sony doing exclusive architecture interview last year, but then not giving us much more than that even still. Like we only have architecture
architecture information and not anything with regards to gameplay and actual frame rate and new games and the hardware. We're really close to a launch here. We're looking six months out from a new launch of the PlayStation 5. And I mean, gotta be concerned. I'm concerned. Maybe we don't need to. Maybe we can look back and say everything was fine and we were just overblowing it and Sony was just trying to be mysterious. Ooh, maybe, we'll find out. But in case you've been mysteriously shopping for PC parts but haven't been able to find them due to Voldemort over on Amazon, Tom's Hardware actually did an interview with several different PC distributors talking about how they're maintaining their supply chains with Newegg as well as Main Gear and iBuyPower. And they all talked about how they have distributed supply centers that makes it so that they can stay afloat during this time and that they don't foresee tons of issues at this point. They're trying to make sure that nobody's price gouging on their websites with regards to things that everybody needs for working at home, such as webcams, making sure that prices stay fair and that new products will still be coming out while they protect employee and customer health. So in case you can't get products on Amazon, maybe it's time to go back to old new egg. Maybe. Maybe it's time to go back to NVIDIA for another graphics card because we got benchmarks of the GTX 1650 GDDR6 edition. Benchmarks are out and it's about 5%, 5 to 6% faster than the previous version because it has faster RAM. Cool. GTX 1650 has faster RAM. You can get faster RAM in your computer. DDR5 is ready, according to SK Hynix, saying that they're ready to start production this year. And they're saying up to speeds of 8,400 megabits per second with 64 gigabit densities on the dies. And they could quadruple the density of what we see on DDR4 and making sure the speeds are wicked fast. And they're gonna have a decrease of 20% of power consumption. So DDR5 coming out from all the main heavy hitters being produced. Samsung's got it, SK Hynix has got it. I think Micron also said they got it. Everybody's ready. More RAM, fast RAM, speed RAM, let's go. Speed and onto privacy issues though. Zoom said that they are vowing to bring back user trust with a, an extensive security review. We talked in yesterday's episode of Hot News that Zoom has been having a lot of privacy concerns, mainly because they weren't meant to scale up this quickly, it seems like. So the CEO said in a blog post that they're working to fix the biggest trust, safety, and privacy issues, and that they will include a comprehensive review and allowing third-party experts to understand and ensure the security of all our new customers and users use cases. So we'll see if that actually matters, if that works. They've already been making steps to fix some of the issues, such as sending data to Facebook. They cut that off as soon as people brought that up, which could lead you to believe that they knew about it and they only were going to deal with it until it was a concern. Or you could presume that they didn't really think it was a big deal and that it was just like it was off in the periphery when somebody brought it up. It's like, oh yeah, I guess our app does do that. Huh, let's shut that down. Either way, it's not a good look, but they're working on it. And Sony has said that they're not working on getting The Last of Us part part two out on the date that they specified because it's just gonna be indefinitely delayed at this point, even though it was supposed to release on May 29th. This is obviously slightly different from the upcoming Final Fantasy VII Remake launch because that seems to have been happening so close to supply chains being disrupted that they couldn't really do anything. The main thing is trying to make sure that physical and digital copies go on sale at the same time so you don't have one consumer paying for something that they didn't get when other people can enjoy the same thing and then forcing a situation where they can't get a refund from the retailer, but they have to buy it digital if they want to stay up to date with everybody. They're going to make sure that doesn't happen with Last of Us Part Two, even though they couldn't do that with Final Fantasy VII. And there's a lot of stuff you can't do with the Hubble Space Telescope because that thing launched in 1990. It's as old as I am. It's ridiculous. Anyways, the replacement, the James Webb Space Telescope, has been officially successfully tested for the first time. It looks like it's going to launch next year. We're going to get some deep space images. I love Hubble Telescope. Can't wait for the James Webb one. I'm so excited. I love space. It was my main thing that I was obsessed with growing up. I wanted to be an astrophysicist and look where that got, that got me. Ah, man, childhood ambitions do me dirty. And Instacart's no longer doing its employees dirty because it's gonna be providing their shoppers with free masks and hand sanitizers next week. Finally, freaking finally, who knows if this is actually going to be a substantial amount where it's actually gonna take place to help all of their shoppers or it's gonna be like that gesture that the government in Japan did where it was like, we give you two masks per family. Excuse me, what about a family of four? Two masks per family. But Tesla is protecting its bottom line because they have announced that they had their best first quarter ever, despite all the things that are going on with Voldemort. They manufactured 102,000 vehicles and delivered 88,400 in Q1. This is slightly down from Q4 of last year where they were able to deliver over 100,000 units. But I'm sure part of that is just like slowdowns with regards to Voldemort and different areas being locked down. So the bulk of the numbers came from the Model 3 and Model Y. They delivered 76,000 of 
just those two cars alone. Good job, Tesla beating expectations. It's crazy. Teslas go fast and every other auto manufacturer is going fast to catch up to them. And Honda has announced that it's going to be building two electric vehicles, but it's going to be basing it on GM's platform, which is the one that's like configurable and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to be doing that. Cool. Great job. Tesla. And while I may be a Tesla fanboy, all you Apple fanboys better get ready because Apple seems poised to announce a new phone today. It might be out by the time this episode of Hot News comes out. And if so, congratulations. If not, it's just a rumor according to things that people are seeing on various websites, but it does seem like the iPhone SE is about to launch today. iPhone 9 is apparently its official name, whatever we want to freaking call it. I don't know. There was the phone case that said the iPhone 4.7 inch new one. Who knows? It's supposed to be launching today the 2020 iPhone SE, also known as the iPhone 9, is gonna exist. But Apple also mistakenly announced the release of their AirTags because they posted a video showing some support stuff. And in one of the support stuff, it has an enable offline finding thing. And it says offline finding enables this device and AirTags to be found when not connected to Wi-Fi or cellular. And in case you're not familiar with what AirTags are, they're those little things that you put on like your keys and then you use your phone to remote locate it. That's the general idea and gist behind that. And the general idea and just behind Apple opening its US stores is no, no, not at all. They're saying that they're probably not gonna be opening up US stores until at least early May, which might be ambitious in certain parts of the country. And in case you haven't been following Voldemort, it does seem like the apex of all of the things happening will be sometime in the next two weeks in certain states, but states like here in Florida, we're poised to hit ours in March, May 3rd. So we've still got about a month out before we start seeing the worst of it. But Google's been seeing a lot of the worst of the information out there and they're done. They're done with the disinfo. They're done with the misinfo and they're investing six and a half million dollars to help fight Voldemort related misinformation. It's going to be happening. And YouTube also put out a post yesterday saying that they're now re-monetizing people who say the s word. Can't say it still because I don't know if we're going to get demonetized and advertisers are pulling out of YouTube. So we need all the money we can get to stay afloat around here. Anyways, so maybe we can start trying to say it in future episodes. I don't know. We'll test it out on ones we think will perform poorly. But you know what else performs poorly? AI is trying to make art, which is why Google's AI will now replicate your photos in the style of iconic paintings. Instead of being good at real creativity, just be good at faking creativity by taking two people's works and mashing them together. But speaking of mashing things together, T-Mobile and Sprint got mashed together like two bunnies during fever season. We announced yesterday that T-Mobile has announced that it's the new T-Mobile with Sprint and the T-Mobile merger being done. However, California says, wait a second, mm, you didn't pass it by us because the overlords of California have decided that mm -mm, you, you got approval from almost all of the government authorities except for California Public Utilities Commission, which is not going to give you information until April 16th. So hold your horses, T-Mobile. You might not be the new T-Mobile. You might be the old T-Mobile. You might stay that way. California decides that you don't exist. And you know what I decide doesn't exist? The freaking app known as Quibi. I hate this app so freaking much. I hate Megan Whitman and her destruction of HP and the ruining of Palm. It pisses me off so much. Quibi is an outdated, out of touch, social media, stupid video platform that's supposed to be launching on Monday. And apparently T-Mobile is giving customers on unlimited wireless family plans a free year of Quibi, which is the only freaking way people are gonna use it because who just wants space? Five dollars a month to watch freaking 10 minute videos that you can rotate either way with the turnstile technology when you have a CEO who's out is outdated and out of touch as Meg Whitman. Who wants that? Not me. Quibi should die and I'm really upset about it and that's the end of this episode of Hot News. Don't forget about today's existential question of the day which is if you punch yourself and it hurts, are you too weak? Or are you too strong? And all I know is Quibi is too gosh dang weak to survive in this environment. It should die on impact. Let's go. That's the end. I'm done. I'm gonna go into the weekend with Quibi. Quibi Rage, goodbye. They all talked about how they have different...